Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, December 20th, 2022 edition of the Sand and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, if you want to be ready for Christmas dinner with family, you probably need to brush up on Mastodon, which seems to be the hot topic uh, these days around uh, dinner tables. And Xavier has a little uh, write-up here about finding Mastodon servers. Mastodon, well, uh, actually earlier in a chat, someone uh, reminded me it feels kind of like the good old BBS, uh, the bulletin board uh, system, where you had uh, various... Uh, distinct uh, systems that were operated often by individuals that were joined together in a network. That's really sort of how Mastodon kind of operates. The challenge here in identifying Mastodon servers is that it's not like uh, Twitter, Facebook and such where you have one company, one domain name or a certain uh, range of IP address that you have to worry about. But Mastodon servers can be pretty much anywhere. They can be inside your network if an enterprising uh, sysadmin or such uh, set one up uh, for uh, their own uh, community. So it can be a little bit more difficult to identify them. And of course, they're at least the way they're exposed, really just uh, web servers. Luckily, since uh, these Mastodon servers are linked to each other, uh, there are APIs out there and uh, one server in particular, uh, instances.social, makes that available that allows you to get a list of all of the host names or domain names that are being used by known Mastodon servers that are linked uh, to instances.social. Again, remember, these are only the servers that instances.social knows about the way Mastodon works. You don't have to tell anybody that you're running a particular server, but of course, then you also can't exchange information with the rest of uh, the Mastodon network. I'll probably soon implement a quick flag uh, to IP addresses uh, in uh, our uh, database that'll tell you if a particular IP address is associated uh, with a known Mastodon instance. As I'm recording this, I'm also just uh, checking the API myself and it uh, looks like there are about 17,300 instances listed. Uh, just a matter of time till we hear some news about Mastodon being used for command control. Actually, it has a fairly uh, simple and easy to use API. It looks like a non-security update by Microsoft uh, released last week, supposed to fix some uh, memory issues with the camera, is causing some blue screens. The problem here appears to be that the, the version of some files are mismatched. If you run into this problem, well, uh, Microsoft has a help page for you, and I'll link to it in the show notes. And sticking with Microsoft here, Microsoft also announced late last week that with the February update for Microsoft Edge, there will also be an update that will disable Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer is still available and is still installed on Windows systems, but starting February, well, uh, you better get used uh, to Edge and also make sure that you don't have any odd web applications that are not working with Microsoft Edge. Microsoft Edge will still retain its Internet Explorer mode in order to deal with some of the compatibility issues here. And Microsoft just recommends to essentially go ahead and disable Internet Explorer uh, before uh, this uh, deadline. And well, and uh, Third story here from Microsoft, but this time affecting Apple. A Mac OS in the latest updates patched some gatekeeper issue. Well, a Microsoft's research team now published a blog post with details about this particular vulnerability because, well, uh, Apple originally was notified by Microsoft of this vulnerability back in July. And now after it has been addressed, Microsoft is releasing these uh, details. 
And apparently users of a particular Corsair gaming keyboard, the K100, experienced some issues that some users attributed to a possible keystroke logger. The issue here was that text typed in the keyboard was sometimes typed again uh, hours or days later. Well, uh, course I now confirmed that this is a bug. There is no uh, keystroke data being reported uh, back to course error or leaving the system. I guess uh, just uh, some weird sort of buffer issue in the keyboard that causes this problem. And uh, they sort of describe a workaround here that essentially revolves resetting the keyboard and also uh, suggest contacting course error if you're affected by this issue. And yes, malicious uh, Python packages in PyPy are still an issue. Latest victim here is Sentinel-1. An attacker apparently impersonated Sentinel-1, according to Reversing Labs, offering a Python package that will make it easy to interact with the Sentinel-1 API. And uh, well, instead, it was just exfiltrating your uh, data. Nothing wrong here, of course, with Sentinel-1. This is essentially just like phishing, where someone... Uh, unrelated to Sentinel-1 uh, just made life a package using their brand name. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.